On today's video, we're going to be talking about five rattlesnake myths. And since we're talking venomous, our friend Kevin's going to be joining us. But Willie, why are we talking about rattlesnakes right now? Well, I'm glad you asked because in Southern California where I live, it is now rattlesnake season. I went outside earlier today and I saw a ton of fence lizards running around and I know the rattlesnakes are out too. I just haven't seen one yet. So today we're gonna to dispel five myths about rattlesnakes and hopefully give you a little bit more information on them and maybe even a little bit of an appreciation for them. Myth number one, rattlesnakes are highly aggressive predators. This is wrong. And this is something that I heard a bunch when I lived up in Mariposa, right by Yosemite National Park. I heard stories from a bunch of people about rattlesnakes literally chasing them down a trail. While this is a great story, it is most certainly not true. Rattlesnakes are lay and wait predators, which means they're gonna ambush their prey. They're gonna find a really good hiding spot, hang out, wait, and then when something goes by in front of them, they're gonna strike out and attack it. If they're not going for food, they're pretty timid and shy, and they're gonna try to avoid striking or attacking unless they feel like they're backed up or cornered and something's coming directly at them. This is the Western Pacific rattlesnake. And this one is wondering what is going on. Notice how he's not chasing me or even exhibiting any aggression towards me at all. He's just trying to get away. In fact, if you're wondering how unlikely it is for a rattlesnake to strike you, even if you step on it, this guy Cale Morris, and I don't just like him because his last name is the same as mine, he published this study where he rigged up a fake leg and he, he stepped on rattlesnakes to see what they would do. Of 175 rattlesnakes that he stepped on, only six of them struck the leg's boot and only three went into coil position. I, I can't do the math right here, but I know that's a very small percentage of, of snakes. In fact, I was climbing one night with a group of friends. We were climbing Royal Arches under a full moon in Yosemite. Amazing climb. Got to the top, we're hiking off. It's probably like one or two in the morning and we're going down like a little scree slope and we have headlamps on and I, I'm like third or fourth back. And I look down and my light hits a rattlesnake in the path. The three people in front of me had walked over it. It hadn't struck, it hadn't rattled, it hadn't done anything. It was just quietly being there. I made the mistake of saying, oh look, a rattlesnake, because I thought it was cool. And my friend in front of me literally jumped. I've never seen a, a human man jump that high that, that quickly, but it was pretty impressive. The snake didn't do anything. It was just, just chilling. It was just looking at us like we were a bunch of big, dumb mammals. It's not trying to eat us. We're way too big. And it doesn't really want to waste energy and effort on striking at us unless it feels like its life is in danger. Myth number two, the rattle on a rattlesnake means they are about to attack. Like William Wallace charging into battle, that rattle means attack. No, it doesn't mean attack. The rattle is kind of the opposite. The rattle is, is shaking to say, hey, back off. I don't want to attack. Leave me alone. I feel threatened by you. That's all. That's all the rattle is. It's, it's literally a snake saying, leave me alone. I don't want to bite you and I feel threatened. They don't even rattle when they're about to strike out for prey because that would give away their position. It makes no sense. The rattle is literally tell you, just back off. I'm freaked out. Easy. I always say rattlesnakes are like the kindest snakes because they, they literally tell you they're threatened and to leave them alone. And all we have to do is leave them alone and we won't get bitten or have any issues with them. Myth busted. And remember Kevin says, like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. If you came here from Green Room Pythons, super stoked to have you. Just getting started. We're gonna try to put out videos pretty regularly with our animals, with Bob out herping, who knows what else. Okay, back to myth busting. Myth number three, the babies, like Kevin, are more dangerous than the adults. This is the most common myth I always hear. Guess what? It's not true. Look at, look at this little guy. It's just too much. So many interruptions. Kevin, for instance, he is a juvenile. He is not full grown. Oh, he's about to poop on me. You're about to poop on me, bud? Maybe we'll put him down for a second before uh, I get a beaded lizard poop. Kevin's the only one of my animals that ever poops on me. And he, he does it with some consistency. So we'll try to avoid it while we're filming. But like I was saying, Kevin, as you can see, he's a little guy. He's gonna be like three, three and a half feet when he gets bigger. Mexican beaded lizards are the largest venomous lizard in the world. Put an asterisk on that. We'll talk about it in a different video. But when he's this size, his venom glands are also smaller than when he's three and a half feet. I promise you, getting bit by a small snake with smaller venom glands, you're gonna get less venom, which is better than 
being bit by a full-size snake, full-size fangs, and getting a much higher venom load. Go through things like baby rattlesnakes can't control the amount of venom they can inject, and that's why they're more dangerous, but not true. Not true at all. Oh, hold on. Kevin is going, going on the run. Well, he's just crawling across me like I'm a human jungle gym, so that's, a, that's definitely a thing. Look at him. Such a scary, venomous monster. Myth number four. Kevin, you're, you're supposed to face the camera for this. Myth number four. I tried to do a whole myth with Kevin, but he's, he's too busy wanting to explore everything. So let's talk about venom. Rattlesnakes are nothing to be messed around with. They should be respected. Their venom could very much kill you or seriously injure you in a way you do not want to experience. But that's not to say all rattlesnake bites are going to kill you. More likely than not, if you're in good health and you get to a hospital and doctor and get anti-venom and everything quickly, chances are you're not going to die, but you are going to have a very, very painful, horrible time dealing with it. Unless you get a dry bite where there's no venom injected, which also happens. They're not these deadly killers that are out there to assassinate you with a single bite. So get that out of your head. Not true. Kevin is, is running amok over here. Look, look at this guy. But what are you doing? You're just, just hanging out, doing whatever you want, right? You think you can just do whatever you want because you have those big claws? Look at those. Come on. Come on. You're like a little lanky teenager, huh? Myth number five. Rattlesnakes are useless. They're just venomous snakes that could hurt us and we should kill them. This is a terrible myth. And if you follow this channel, you know this is not true. Don't harm or kill snakes. It's never called for. Rattlesnakes play a vital role in the ecosystem keeping rodent populations in check among other things. Removing them or killing them can mess up the ecological balance. And a lot of rattlesnakes, like the Northern Pacific rattlesnake that we had up in Mariposa where we had our goat farm, they actually have a pretty small range where they live. I don't mean like the species has a small range, but I mean like each individual rattlesnake has a fairly small area that it lives in and, and returns to, and it kind of stays there. So if you kill that snake or remove it, it's gonna throw the balance of that area kind of out of whack. Worst case, if a rattlesnake is somewhere where it shouldn't be like around a house, especially with kids or small animals, you don't need to kill it, just have someone relocate. There's plenty of people. There's actually a wonderful person who I've been following on Instagram, Wrangler Bruce out of San Diego, and I'm sure there's people up around here. Don't do it yourself, please unless you're experienced with that. Get someone to do it, relocate them, don't kill them, easy. Like I mentioned in the past, I have relocated rattlesnakes. All right, who wants to go see a rattlesnake? They almost got you? Yeah. Pretty snake though. When I see them, if I'm biking or running, I always stop and check them out. I've never in my life had one come at me. They're always trying to get away. So next time you see a rattlesnake, look at it from a safe distance, leave it alone, let it be. If it's near your home or house, find someone who can come in and remove it safely for you. Don't kill it, respect them, but enjoy the beauty that is the rattlesnake because they are pretty gorgeous, pretty amazing animals if you think about it. And for me and Kevin, that's a wrap on today's video. Hope everyone has a great one. Peace.